Hello there, this is an interview with the Ambassador of the United States to the Gambia, Ambassador Richard Carl Pasco. Well, today marks the inauguration of Joe Biden as President of the United States. And their Ambassador joins me in the studio today. He actually came to thank uh, the FATU Network over our role in the U.S. elections 2020, the coverage uh, and the contribution and the role we played. So he was here to thank us, but also to talk to us about uh, the inauguration of their new president. Ambassador Pasco, thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. So Ambassador, first of all, uh, what do you make of the role of the Gambian media in the U.S. just concluded U.S. elections? Well, first, thank you so much for the Fatu Network and for, uh, for your commitment to, uh, to making the time, really. Normally, uh, every four years, we do uh, election coverage and we invite foreign journalists to the United States and our, our International Visitor Leadership Program uh, to do a tour of the United States. And of course, with COVID-19, we weren't able to bring journalists to the United States. And so this was all done virtually. And I just want to express my appreciation to you and to Fatu Network for making the time to, to do this all virtually. I know that sometimes the, the times that they had these sessions were not necessarily normal business hours. Uh, here when we account for time differences, but so thank you very much. I think the role is really critical uh, because of course uh, the nature of American democracy is, is different. Every country's democratic systems function a little bit differently and uh, the ability to bring reporting on on how American democracy actually is structured under the Constitution, uh, how the different states uh, actually have the uh, authority and sovereignty as states to establish their own electoral laws, obviously within certain parameters and then in terms of the conduct of elections and, and also importantly the campaigns themselves uh, and responses and reactions from, from voters, uh, Americans that you were able to contact and, and speak with during that process. But I think the ability of Gambian uh, media to cover that and to provide insight into how the American election process worked was really invaluable to explaining to, to the Gambian public. Of course, we have such a strong connection between the Gambia and the United States. We have uh, obviously a lot of personal connections. We have many Gambian Americans, many Gambians who are residents in the United States. And uh, the Gambia is a small country. Uh, I don't think I've met a single Gambian that doesn't have a relative somewhere in the United States or some other connection to the United States. And so there's an intense interest in what's happening in America. And the role of the media to try to explain that was really invaluable. So thank you again. And, and, and what this election, was quite remarkable. The most expensive election in the, in, the, in the history of the United States. Record number of voters, really. As an ambassador of, of the US, what were the, some of the lessons that you learned out of this election? Well, I think, I think two key uh, lessons. And I, and I think the first one is that uh, Americans are passionate about the democratic uh, process. Uh, as you noted, record turnout uh, in voters in this election this year. Uh, very hotly contested races, and not just the race for president, but the race uh, uh, for members of, of uh, the United States House of Representatives, the, for the United States Senate. Uh, the diversity among candidates that were running this year, a great example is in Georgia, which elected its first uh, African-American senator uh, to the U.S. Senate and the first Jewish uh, senator to the U.S. Senate uh, in the runoffs that just occurred uh, earlier this month. Uh, but we also had remarkable diversity uh, from both parties actually running for different seats in national legislative uh, bodies. But also when you go to the state and the local level, these many, in many states, uh, the, the local uh, elections for governor or their own state legislatures were also very hotly, hotly contested. And so it, it shows that I think, uh, especially given the record turnout and the record attention being paid to this, that, you know, that Americans are passionate about the democratic process. Um, it also does show, I think, the number two thing is that there are deep divisions in the United States over the direction of the country on, on various different policy matters. Uh, and people want their voices to be heard. They want to be able to speak up and they want to, to be able to influence those decisions and, and the future of the United States. And, uh, and that obviously requires a, a, a commitment to uh, our constitutionally mandated and established freedoms. And, and the legally implemented uh, um, um, electoral processes. And one thing that will also remain etched in the history of your country has to do with the, the, the fact of your outgoing president refusing to accept defeat. He had all along, all throughout, said that this election was fraudulent. In the short period that I have lived, 
Um, I think this is the first time an American president would, uh, you know, c continuously insist that the election was rigged in favor of, of his challenger. And what we have seen is that he has never accepted defeat. What do you make of that? Yeah, I, to be very frank, uh, you know, I, 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 am, uh, I am slightly more than five decades old. I won't reveal the exact number, <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, in, in my time of, uh, and as a young teenager, uh, adolescent, I was a, a, a policy and politics sort of a, a, a fan. I, I followed it closely. I would watch literally the proceedings from the floor of the Senate and the floor of the House on cable television. That's how how a bit uh, of a nerd I was when it came to this. Um, certainly there are many different aspects of this presidential election that have been unprecedented. Uh, you mentioned the turnout, uh, the passion, obviously. Uh, and yes, that is in fact unprecedented. And in, in, in my lifetime, um, the, 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 uh, and the acknowledgement came extremely late um, um, that the election was over. I take, I take heart in the statements of many, many different elected political leaders and appointed uh, to include former Attorney General Barr that, uh, that uh, contradicted the unfounded allegations of fraud. Um, now that said, you know, certainly uh, every election, and especially one as massive on such a big scale as the United States, you know, we have 350 million people, 50 states, et cetera, uh, all, all coming to uh, an election on the same day. Granted, there are early voting processes and mail-in voting processes, but it's a lot to manage. And certainly there were some procedural issues that need to be in, uh, looked into and, uh, and to look at correcting. But certainly, you know, when the former Attorney General of the United States says that there's no widespread fraud, I, I take that to mean that he meant it. You, you take that, but now here we are, Joe Biden finally takes takes over, takes, takes office today. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the future, what do you see for your country? Your country is battling uh, the coronavirus pandemic. Over 400,000 people have died. Joe Biden coming in. Uh, how does the future look like for your country in terms of dealing with all these challenges? Coronavirus, the economy, mm -hmm. the issue of race. Uh, these are all uh, very, very important topics. Let me start with COVID-19. Uh, clearly, uh, we are suffering in the United States. As you noted, over 400,000 deaths. Uh, there's a, uh, a reasonably, uh, I think, uh, credible uh, assessment that we'll hit half a million deaths in the very short future, near future. I know that President-elect Biden has committed to a 100-day uh, challenge for people to please wear face coverings and masks. I would just relate to, please, I would love to see Gambians and uh, adopt a 100-day challenge and wear masks. I don't see much mask wearing when we're out. I know, thank you so much. I know we, we respect and honor those, mm -hmm. um, those preventive measures. You're right, the, the question of, of race relations, the question of economic opportunity, uh, the question of, uh, of, uh, of ensuring that uh, the future, the children of America and the future of America are educated and uh, develop the skills necessary for the economy of the future. All of those are critical issues uh, that we are wrestling with. And, but this isn't the first time in my life that we've wrestled with these issues. Uh, one of the things that I think makes the United States quite unique is that uh, we have faced a lot of very challenging times in our history, even our recent history. And uh, uh, we tend to hold a mirror up to ourselves uh, pretty well. And we're pretty self-critical when it comes down to it. And we do look for ways to improve and to make ours a more perfect union, which uh, of course what we are always striving to do. Uh, but making, one, uh, making it more perfect means that we're not perfect. There is no perfection in this world, uh, but we certainly are, are striving to become more perfect. Let's talk about, I, 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 should have, I know I should have asked you this before we got to the Joe Biden inauguration, but the issue of the riots, this mm -hmm. was something that really uh, took uh, the whole, whole world by surprise that America, mm -hmm. with all the, mm -hmm. uh, the 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 democracy, uh, how their democracy have have progressed, for them to uh, do such a thing, that was something that a lot of people did not see coming. What do you, I mean? You issued a statement mm -hmm. uh, expressing your repugnance mm -hmm. uh, over the act, over what really transpired uh, at the Capitol. Uh, in, looking back at those events, the ugly events, the attack on what a lot of people would call the seat of American democracy. Um, how, how did you feel when you saw your compatriots, your fellow countrymen, heading to the Capitol in a bit to overturn in the election in favor of Donald Trump? Well, I was horribly dismayed uh, and angry. Uh, you know, I, I, I put that in the statement that uh, 
statement wasn't written in Washington. It was written right here in Banjul, right here in uh, right here in the embassy. Uh, it is simply unjustified and indefensible that a small group of people would seek to uh, change the course of a constitutionally based and mandated electoral process and the functioning of the elected representatives of the people in the, in the House and the Senate in a joint session of Congress under the auspices and the leadership of the president pro, pro tempore, who is the vice president of the United States, to follow the law and the constitution to validate the electoral college results which showed a victory for uh, President-elect Joseph Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Uh, that, they, that that small group of people would try to overturn uh, the electoral results, the constitutional activities of the rest of their fellow Americans is unacceptable. Uh, there are obviously, as, as I know you're following, uh, active investigations on a national level uh, the FBI has made dozens, uh, well over 100 arrests at this point in time. Charges are being brought against people who, um, who did invade the Capitol in that mob action and commit those acts of violence. Charges of, of murder are, have been brought against people involved in assaulting the Capitol Hill police officer who died um, um, that, that evening uh, from the injuries he sustained. Uh, but no, just simply put, it, unacceptable, indefensible, and those who perpetrated this act and those who incited that mob need to be held to account. So as you go about installing your new president here at the embassy, how do you plan on marking the, the day? Very important day, huh? Oh, thanks for that advertising opportunity. Uh, <laughs> on the embassy's uh, uh, Facebook page, we will have a Facebook live session at 3 o'clock today to talk a little bit about the inauguration, the history of inaugurations, and the significance. Uh, there are some things that are just sort of procedural. So in every, uh, on every inauguration day, embassies around the world, and I've done this you know, over the course of my uh, almost 30-year career in the diplomatic service, that at 12 noon on inauguration day, you remove the photographs, the portraits of the outgoing president, vice president, and secretary of state. And then, of course, we, we wait until we receive the ones, uh, the new ones of the new uh, president, vice president, and new secretary of state. Yeah. It does take a number of weeks to get those. We, any references on, on our social media pages to the outgoing administration will be updated and changed. And of course, um, and, and those are just sort of the physical manifestations of, of that electoral change, that democratic process. Uh, but in a normal year, we would have, not only would we have had a big election day return event, uh, um, gathering, uh, inviting dozens and dozens of people to join us, we would have had an inauguration event as well. To have, uh, to have people join us to watch the inauguration and to celebrate this visible uh, manifestation of, of democracy in action. And finally, you happen to be one of the many U.S. ambassadors who is serving at a period when you have one president leaving office and you have another, a new one coming into office. How do you intend to work with the, uh, with the Biden administration or Joe Biden, your president, in pushing the interests of your country here in the Gambia? Well, all American diplomats who are appointed, uh, and especially career foreign service officers, are apolitical. We do not serve any political party or any political candidate. Our job is to provide the very be best information, insight, analysis, and recommendations uh, to our elected leadership. And uh, from our elected leadership, those who are appointed uh, to positions of authority and leadership uh, within our government. And our job is to, is to seek to, to assist them in developing and implementing their policies as they, as they develop them and, and roll them out. And that hasn't changed uh, for decades. Um, and so that's what we'll be doing. Uh, we will be seeking to ensure that, uh, that new officials coming into the State Department and other foreign affairs agencies in the United States government are aware of the key issues here in the Gambia. Uh, and the key areas where we're engaging with uh, both the Gambian government the Gambian, and the Gambian people, civil society, et cetera, to support the Gambia's own democratic transition here and uh, the electoral process here in 2021. This is a pivotal year for the Gambia and, uh, and, and obviously looking forward to uh, the public engagement uh, on Gambian electoral processes. Do you have a final comment, Mr. Ambassador? Uh, I, I just want to, again, thank you. I, I want to acknowledge the critical role uh, that the news media plays in any democracy, healthy democracy. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing the reporting from Fatu Network and other, others in the news media community here on the key issues uh, that Gambians are concerned about. 
And uh, as always, it's, it's a pleasure to see you, a privilege to be here, and I look forward to speaking with you again in the near future. Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for coming. So that's the Ambassador of the United States speaking to me there. Today is the inauguration of Joe Biden as President of the uh, uh, United States there. That is it from me. Thank you for being